Chelsea Studio here, and today we're building a light box. What's up everybody? Welcome back to the studio. So today's video was inspired by a course that I took that was discussing how to properly take photos of um, merchandise. The course I took mentioned using a light box to photograph um, store product. And I thought it was really great for the stickers, um, but for my larger prints, my 11 by 14s and my 8 by 10s, the light boxes that you can buy already equipped were just a little bit too small. So I still wanted to use a light box rather than setting up an actual photography studio. So what I decided to do was just hit up my local dollar store and get everything that I needed to build my own. Uh, the dollar store had a lot of things that I needed, but I did, did end up having to go to Walmart to get a couple of things. And I will mention them as I am creating my light box for you guys today. So let's get started. Hi guys, so we have a camera change here. I probably could do this on my desk, but I do have some watercolor stuff over there and I just didn't want to move it. So I decided to come down to my magic carpet from Aladdin and we are going to build our light box today. So I'm going to start by showing you guys what I have and what I'm going to use. And then after I show you everything, we'll build it. So the first thing that you're going to need is some foam corner boards. Um, or you can use some cardboard if you have just a box. I couldn't find a box big enough. Uh, Walmart usually sells boxes um, up to 18 inches and I wanted one of the 18 inch ones. They were actually sold out whenever I went. So I'm going to use this instead. Um, I also went to the dollar store first, but they were out of foam core. So I did end up getting this from Walmart. So I got three. I only want my light box to be three-sided because I will be using a backdrop that covers the bottom and I want it to still remain portable and foldable. So you guys um, can definitely do a four-sided one if you would like to, if you don't care that it's foldable or not, but I want my foldable. Um, the next thing that I have here is some fusible interfacing. Um, as long as it's interfacing, I don't, I don't think it matters if it's feasible or not. But I, um, this one I found in a package at Walmart. Um, I'll have to look up the exact price for you. I can't remember what it was, how much it was. But uh, you could also use something like tracing paper. I didn't have any sheets big enough. Um, so the interfacing is to diffuse the light. So I'll show you uh, what this does whenever we get to that point. The last thing that I have materials wise um, besides just the little extra stuff that I already have on hand um, was is this roll of paper so you could use a poster board um, again mine is going to be 20 inches by 20 inches and I didn't think that the poster board sizes that I could find at the dollar store and at Walmart were big enough so I found this roll it's called a banner roll um, but I found it at Walmart and it was a little more expensive I think it was about nine bucks I'm not sure I'll have to look it up but you know I don't need a lot of this this is 150 feet I definitely don't need 150 feet of this but I do make a lot of stuff especially now that I'm doing YouTube so I feel like I'll probably find a use for it some other things that I have that I'm gonna be using are I have a t-square just to make my edges straight uh, and I also have a metal ruler so that I can measure the short side and then use the T-square to make a straight line across the bottom. And I will show you guys that when I do it. Um, I also have an X-Acto knife. I have a pencil so that I can draw on there. I have a cutting mat to put underneath the foam core as I'm cutting it. Um, and then I will also be needing some packing tape which I have set aside and I can't reach it. And I am going to be using a hot glue gun as well, which is plugged in over there. So yeah, let's get started. So first I am measuring um, the poster board so that I can cut off the piece and make a 20 by 20 square. And I'm going to do this to all three of my, um, oh, I'm sorry, foam core, not poster board. 
So I just have my T-square to draw my straight lines, and then I'm going in with an X-Acto knife. Notice I'm doing a lot more passes with the X-Acto knife. That is because the foam core likes to kind of shred, um, so I prefer to take it slow. That way it can get a nice clean cut, otherwise it will be choppy and the edge will be gross. Um, it's not really a big deal with this particular thing because I'm going to be just using it in my office, but if you are using foam core for something else, just know that you want to take your time and you want to go over as many times as you can. Um, I am using the X-Acto knife like a pencil here and then I switch to overhand. Um, I had a lot more success overhand, which is I believe the proper way that you're supposed to use the X-Acto knife. So I did that to all three of my pieces and now what I'm going to do is take my square and I'm going to cut the hole for the fusing to be attached to. I want the hole to be um, a 14 inch square and this is a 20 inch piece of board. Um, my fusing is 15 inches so that's why I decided on 14 inches. So I laid it out, realized that I needed about 14 inches and then I measure it all the way around so that I have a 3 inch border all the way around which will leave me a 14 inch square in the middle. And I am keeping all of these scraps. Um, I can use them for packaging, I can use them for um, crafting, I can use them for other YouTube videos. So I am keeping the foam core, setting it aside, and I'll use it for another project. I only measure, or you'll only see me measure, one of these foam boards, and that is because um, once I have the measurements for one of them, I can just cut out the center and then I will trace the inside of it. That way I don't have to re-measure on my next piece of foam core. And you can see that I'm using my X-Acto knife overhand this time again because it was much more successful. So. Unless you're doing something really tiny, you get better results using the X-Acto knife overhand, and it's safer. Okay, so I have my frame, and I'm going to trace it out on this other one. Okay, so I have cut my styrofoam foam core stuff. Um, I decided to leave this one whole because I don't want to use a top light. I only want to use two side lights. So I'm going to use this for the top and then these two are going to be the sides. The back of this is blue and I want this to be the outside. So I had said before that I want this um, foam, this light box to be able to fold down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some packing tape to create a hinge that way, if I put it half on the side wall and half on the actual board itself, whenever I go to try and fold it, it should just close, just like that. But before I do that, I actually want to go ahead and hot glue my fusing to the sides, just like that, and it will diffuse the light for me. So it'll make the light softer, a little less, a little less bright. So to glue the interfacing, I just cut it to size and I decided to put a little tack of glue on the corners. Um, I highly recommend you do just a drop of glue in each corner and then go across the edge. Um, I had more success once I started to do that. Um, and you will see me pushing down a lot with my metal ruler. That's because the interfacing is not very thick, so the hot glue does come through a little bit. And um, I did get burned a couple times, so just be careful. I don't want you guys to get burned. Okay, so once I've done that, it is time to attach them together with the tape. So I flip it to the white side and tape the inside of these two panels together. Um, and then I'm going to grab the other one and actually set it up because I want them to be able to stack so it needs to have a little bit of space between the pieces. So I stood it up and I decided to tape around that crease 
um, and that just made it to where I would actually um, be able to open it and close it. But since there is a gap, the sticky side of the tape was facing the inside. So to get rid of the sticky side of the tape, I decided to just lay a piece of tape on the seam on the inside as well. And uh, the hinge works, works perfectly. So that's all that's left is to add the paper backdrop. So I uh, decide to cut it to length first. So I'm holding it up to figure out how long I need it. It's not an exact measurement, just where you think you might need it. Um, but it is too wide. So here I'm cutting off the excess of the width. That way I can have a piece that will fit inside the sides of my light box. It's good to have a continuous backdrop like this because then you don't have a crease behind your uh, products. All right, here it is all set up on my desk where I want it to be. I have uh, two daylight bulb lamps. So then we have on the inside just a piece of artwork that I have. You can see she's evenly lit, nice and smooth and beautiful in the daylight bulbs. I think she looks great. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you found it helpful. I'm really excited with how it came out and how well it actually works. So this is a really good inexpensive option for those of you that want a larger setup but uh, don't necessarily want to spend a lot of money on one that's already the right size. This was a much more affordable option for me because I already had the lamps. So I had already made that investment, but my piece, my advice is just to hit up the, the dollar stores and then whatever they don't have, you can probably supplement from either a craft store or from, you know, Walmart or Target. I went ahead and experimented with it a little bit and took some photos within the light box just to see how well it would work. And these are how they turned out. I love it. It is perfect. And if I do need to do any little edits, I can easily do that in a photo editing program like GIMP or Photoshop. I'm gonna be using the light box from now on to create all of my product photos. And you can see those at chelseostudio.com. Other than that, I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day and I will see you next week. Bye guys.